is Ellie coming to you from Australia, also known as The Future. Hello to everyone who's seen me for the first time and hello and welcome back to all of my wonderful subscribers. I had a blitz booked for today, but I thought I'm going to bump it over to tomorrow and make way for this one instead because I just felt like having a little chat with you and I thought, well, I'm not going to wait until tomorrow. I'm going to do it today. So um, first thing is, I just wanted to update anyone who's not aware, and that is that apparently the cards called it correctly again, because, um, you know, the cards are always right and they're always this thing because, you know, they're my cards. Of course they are. Um, Alexia Navalny has been transferred to a maximum security prison by Russian standards, just um, northeast of Moscow. Um, there were claims here on YouTube and in various other forums that perhaps he had already been uh, murdered or something and that he was dead. Um, but, you know, I I have to say, I, I have an opinion on that, which um, I'm going to share with you. I do believe that the energies, I believe in the concept that um, energies can be altered by focusing your attention on them in particularly in negative ways and so you know have you ever seen that video or read that book called the secret um it was written by some australian woman and it was kind of a bit of a fad you know it was trending and um flavor of the month quite a number of years ago i don't know maybe 10 years ago maybe even longer than that it could have even been 15 years ago i do happen to have that video on um CD ROM because it was it arrived free with a local newspaper or something when I was living in Britain the one of the newspapers that I happened to subscribe to uh, paper newspapers that actually get delivered to your home you know remember those days um, they were doing this special and if you got the Sunday version or the Saturday version or whatever they would include a free video uh, CD ROM video or I, I don't know what they are they called CD ROMs anyway the little disc uh, video disc and um, a couple of times you'd get movies a couple of times you'd get docu series and then you get other things well the secret was one of the videos that happened to be free with this newspaper as well as uh, another one which was um super size me you know the mcdonald's one where the guy lives on mcdonald's for about three months or something or a month and and nearly dies from being super healthy to to nearly dying in that time and um that came free as well i think i've still got that disc somewhere in the house as well and then a couple of um oh yes one of my favorite movies old old movies um what's it called um oh it's about um the it's about a young fellow who is, um, it's got Elizabeth Taylor in it. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. It's got Elizabeth Taylor in it, and I can't remember the name of the man, but he is the poor relative of a large business um, family, businessy family that have got factories and things, and he ends up getting a job. His uncle gives him a job in this factory as a factory hand, and he falls in love well, kind of falls in love with one of the factory girl workers and accidentally gets her pregnant, even though this movie is probably from the 40s or 50s. And then he meets his distant cousin who happens to be Elizabeth Taylor, who is very wealthy. And he falls head over heels in love with her. I mean, I don't think it's you, my cousin. I think she's a distant relative and he falls in love with her. And then when he discovers that his poor girlfriend is... Um, is pregnant he actually um, plans to kill her now I don't know at, at the end of the movie um, oh it's called a place in the Sun there you go a place in the Sun finally figured it out one of my favorite old vintage movies of all time and it arrived free in the paper and if you haven't seen it see it it's not your usual um, oldie worldy movie where there's always a happy ending and the and the girl gets the guy etc and a little bit of um, singing and dancing and, and shiny, happy ending. It's actually a very different kind of movie and um, and much more sober, but um, I really love it anyway. So um, I just, I think what I love about it is the fact that it's a bit different. Anyway, it's one of those movies that appeared in the, in the paper, but the secret, getting back onto the topic. You see, I told you I just felt like talking today. Getting back onto the topic, 
this um, this video or book called The Secret, which was a bit of a fad 10 or so years ago, it um, tells you, it, it runs on the theory that um, the universe attracts what we um, ask it for, basically. And so if you are constantly a pessimistic, glass is half empty kind of a person, and you're constantly worrying about all of the things in your life that you have to worry about, you're going to be continuously attracting that negative energy to yourself. Whereas if you are a positive person and you just sort of, you have a half is, uh, glass, glass is half full way of thinking and you laugh and joke and just, you know, you act responsibly, but you let the worries, you know, let someone else worry about things. You know, if you've got an illness, let your doctor worry about it. You focus on positive things. If you have money issues, just do your job and work hard, but don't stress about the bills. Just sort of, you know, do your best and think positive and picture yourself as being wealthy and try to provide as much detail in that picture as possible and kind of mantra to yourself about how good life is and how good life is going to be and how close you are to your goals and things like that. And you will attract positive energy. Well, the same concept applies when it comes to someone like Alexei Navalny. And um, when I did my reading on Alexei Navalny, I didn't do it as a result of the feedback that I was getting, but I was at a certain point in time when the news came out that Alexei had disappeared. Uh, and nobody really was sure where he was, but the Russian um, media was saying that he'd been transferred to a maximum security prison. I started getting all of this um, correspondence from people, emails saying, oh, that someone on YouTube said that he's been killed and someone was, you know, remote viewing and saw him being murdered and, and things like that. And I, um, could you please double check? Could you sort of fact check them a bit? Well, I mean, obviously I can't do that because that's a, a very slippery slope and I don't want to second guess what another YouTuber is saying. Instead, I did my own reading and the cards indicated that Alexei Navalny had indeed been transferred to the maximum security prison, which is a very unpleasant environment. And that actually his, his position uh, in terms of his longevity, his life and his safety is far more fragile than it was before, because now he's sort of um, in the deep recesses of the um, He's in the deep recesses of the prison system and um, there isn't as much supervision and oversight in the area that he is now. And so um, that's what the card said and that's what appears to be the case. I've actually today seen a video uh, where CNN was interviewing uh, his daughter and she was talking about the fact that they have located him. He is indeed in this prison. And she was asking that people subscribe to his YouTube channel, which I would second that um, request as well, to help to broaden its reach, even though it's primarily in Russian. Um, he, they do from time to time um, publish English speaking investigative videos like investigative docu documentaries and things like that. Um, I'm subscribed to uh, Alexei Navalny's channel and have been for um, quite a while now. Um, sort of as a show of support and also because when he has aired English speaking videos, they are extremely interesting um, where he's unveiling and um, and exposing corruption and, and very specific about it as well. He also has a really uh, nice sense of humor. So he it's in, he's an interesting fellow and uh, it's amazing how he can, um, when he has his freedom, can actually compartmentalize and continue to be a loving family man and a hard-working uh, activist and politician and um, he um, I saw a, a video that he aired where he was actually tracking down the men who had poisoned him and uh, confronting them about it and they were terrified <laughs> so um, he's actually got a good sense of humor and he's very very courageous but what the video also demonstrated to me today that I was watching uh, the CNN interview is that um, Alexei at the moment is in a really precarious position and he needs all of the positive energy that he can get. And so with if someone is going to put it out there without any evidence and say that he or oh, they think he's been murdered, 
I believe that in a way what they're doing is they're injecting more negative energy into a position that's already precarious. So I do a reading and I do read what the cards say, but I try not to inflame the issue by putting a vulnerable person in even more of harm's way by almost wishfully thinking that that he is going to uh, meet the worst possible scenario. And I would hope that in this time where he really does need support, that we try and refrain from injecting even more negative energy into his environment and that we actually stay positive as much as we can and um, look at him in a more of a dispassionate way so that we're not becoming part of that problem ourselves and to find ways to support him like for example subscribing to his channel just so that it it has because when you subscribe you're giving it a broader reach which means it reaches more people which means that it becomes even more of a sort of a, a couple of fingers up in the face of Vladimir Putin to demonstrate that even though he's been locked away into the dark recesses of the prison system he's more powerful than ever because more people are uh, subscribing to him and want to hear what he has to say even if it happens to be in Russian, anyway. So that was that thought. Um, I also <laughs> just thought I'd let you know something funny that happened the other day at the hardware store before I start doing readings. Um, I went to buy some more rope and um, I buy this really cheap, it's a nine millimeter vinyl rope that you'd use to tie things on the roof of your car and it's a really unattractive rope actually it comes in black with orange and blue stripes and it comes in yellow with green and, and black stripes and and it's a really unattractive kind of rope but what i really like about it is because it's vinyl it's really cushiony and so when you wrap it in fabric and then sew it into a mat like this mat that i've made here it has a lot of cushion underneath so uh, when the cards hit, they don't have um, a lot of impact. It means that the mat is soft enough to walk on. You could turn it into a bathroom mat, a front door mat, you know, a place setting mat, all sorts of things. Uh, and I'm currently in the process of making a basket for um, display uh, to put things in that I think is going to turn out to be really attractive. So I'll show you when it's finished. But anyway, I went to the hardware store to buy some more rope. And I didn't want to have to go there again and again. And it takes around between 30 and 50 meters of rope to make one item. And uh, like, for example, a mat takes 30 meters and the basket's going to be about 50 to 60 meters worth of rope. So I thought, well, I'm going to buy enough for a few projects. So I bought 180 meters worth of rope, which was um, um, six bushels of rope. And then I also bought some string for the clothesline as well, because I think my clothesline needs to be restring, restrung. So I'm at the cash register getting ready to pay with uh, 200 and something meters of rope. And the woman looked at the rope and she looked at me, the woman at the, ca the cashier, she looked at the rope and she looked at me and then she said, love, would you like to also get an ax and a shovel? And um, I wasn't really paying attention to her immediately. But when I heard that, I looked up and I go, sorry, I'm not sure. What did you say? She goes, well, I thought you might like to also get an axe and a shovel because I was watching this movie last night about a woman who hit her head, no, hit her husband with an axe and killed him or maimed him or knocked him out or something and then wrapped him up like a mummy in a whole bunch of rope, which would have been around about how much I'd been buying. And then she buried him with a shovel uh, somewhere out in the back garden or something. And uh, as soon as I saw all the rope, you kind of looked like maybe you were a bit short on supplies <laughs> and could use an axe and, an and a shovel. True story. That's what she said to me. Anyway, I said, no, it's OK. Um, the rope is just fine as it is. Um, we're just going to hold him down for a while and I'll think about the rest of it later. And she laughed and I laughed and I left. But um, just goes to show, there you go. Be careful when you go by rope if you're going to do these projects because it could lead to all kinds of um, suspicion. Oh, here's one that I haven't thought of for a while, actually. Sheila has asked, um, good day to you, Ellie. Good day, Sheila. Um, thank you for all you do. You're welcome. And thank you for watching.
My question is, what is going on with Alan Weiselberg? Remember him? Uh, the Trump Organization CFO that is under indictment and who is going to trial in August. Have a beautiful day. Mahalo, which is thank you in Hawaiian. Thank you, Sheila. Um, good question. Let's ask about Alan Weisselberg. Now, um, I've done a, I think it was a full reading on Alan Weisselberg. Um, goodness, not that, how long ago was that? It was probably about six months ago. Thereabouts, maybe even slightly longer. And the cards said that he was going to hold on and hold on and hold on until the very last second and then he's going to blab and as it turns out from what we've seen in reporting he is a holder honor so he's being extremely loyal to donald but of course um loyalty slash fear we don't really know because you know donald gets really nasty when people aren't entirely um loyal to him if he even has a whiff of the fact that they're not loyal and so I'm not sure that loyalty is always the right word when it comes to these people that um, that actively go out of their way to protect Donald, even at their own expense. I think sometimes it's that they might be misguided in their loyalty. And sometimes it could just be that they're more frightened of him and what he could do to them than they are of what the authorities could do. But the cards did say that Alan Weisselberg would be very, very loyal to Donald until the very last second. And uh, so the very last second appears to be happening somewhere in around August. Okay, at least that's when he's um, supposed to be um, starting to appear in front of the courts. So um, it could be delayed, we don't really know. Everything takes such a long time. Anyway, so let's see. Just put three cards down when it comes to Alan Weisselberg. And let's just see what the cards have to say. A little bit more. Okay. So we have the two of wands in reverse, the king of pentacles, And the Eight of Wands in reverse. This is a really, really interesting set of cards because the two cards that flank the King of Pentacles are both about unexpected turns of events. So um, very interesting. OK, so we'll begin here with the King of Pentacles in the center. So the King of Pentacles is about a self-made um, very affluent, uh, prosperous male energy. And so this is a person who is very proud of what they've accomplished and they've accomplished a lot. And generally when the card is in reverse, it can be about someone who is quite honorable in the way that they've achieved their or amassed their fortune. But remember, I tell you that the cards are neutral. And so it all depends on what appears on the other side. This um, prosperous male energy I believe is about money and so this is about perhaps the chief financial officer it could be about Alan Weiselberg himself and um, the fortune that he has amassed by perhaps doing his job being loyal to Donald whatever I, I don't know all I know is that it's a single male energy we're talking about Alan Weiselberg it sits here as the anchor card which is a key card in the three card reading um, and so I pay attention and pay, pay attention to it as though it is an affluent male energy. And so it's not a, um, a sinister male energy, but um, it can be quite sinister when it's in reverse. So I always keep in mind that there may be hints of it here and there. OK. On this side, the two of wands in reverse is about an unexpected turn of events. It's also about self-restriction and reluctance. And um, this is interesting because here we have an unforeseen difficult event with regards to business and family. So as you can see, the unexpected turn of events 
based on reluctance or self-restriction could be this decision to hold off and hold off and hold off until unexpectedly the dam bursts and he does the right thing. And it probably is um, related to the fact that, um, and of course, the unexpected, the the unexpected difficult, or the or the difficult event relating to family and business, which is also unexpected, um, relates to Alan Weisselberg's position in the Trump Organization, and also the implication of his family members. The um, Department of Justice has has sort of. Um, maneuvered him in a position where his son is implicated, his um, his grandchildren are, um, I mean, they're not exposed, they're grandchildren, but you know, the, the money, the money that was ill-gotten through the Trump organization, through failure to pay taxes and things like that, was siphoned off to pay for education, uh, so that it would look as though it was um, innocent gift giving and things like that. So the family, the implication of family, and business and the unexpected um, difficult event here, along with the unexpected turn of events, which relate to being restricted or self-restricted or reluctant about something. I think that this is about Alan Weisselberg suddenly and unexpectedly turning and actually spilling uh, and providing information to the Department of Justice. So um, that is what I believe the cards are saying about what's about to come with regards to him. Now, it's probably not going to appear until he has to face a judge and things start getting really very real, but I do think it's coming. Thanks for the question. So Dawn has asked, um, hi Ellie, hello. Hope you're still keeping warm. Absolutely not. <laughs> I forgot to turn the heat on and it's under my um, desk here. Because I don't like having the central heating blowing around all day. It makes your skin and everything so dry. So I have a little heater underneath my um, desk. And I was thinking, gee, it's not working for a while because I forgot to turn it on and um, my teeth are chattering. But it's on now. It's just it's taking a while to warm up. Okay, so that's enough. Um, love the channel. Thank you. I'm glad that you love it. Um, I watch a podcast on YouTube and part of the discussion was Alien and Alien Invasion. The lady was talking about a vision she had of seeing our skies over major cities full of alien ships. My question is, and I don't want to say invasion, but will we get to see a full reveal sightings of alien ship armadas over all major cities across the globe, just like Independence Day, but with the out, but without the end of day scenario? And will it happen the next decade? Thank you so much. OK, so Dawn, basically what Dawn is asking, I think, is... Um, you know, we've uh, the theories. The theory is that you know, up until the, the current time, there have been um, beings from other places, so alien beings, and they have sort of been making themselves known a little bit here, a little bit there. There have been all kinds of reports of seeing aircraft or unidentified aircraft. There are people who claim to have had first-hand encounters of various types and things, but it's all a little bit of this and a little bit of that and nothing kind of full-blown. I am strongly of the belief that if there is an entity out there, it is not a, um, a sinister entity because it would have had the opportunity. It's far more advanced than us, obviously, and it would have had more than enough opportunities to do us harm if it was so inclined. And so I think that it's more along the lines of um, monitoring, uh, learning from us, um, studying us or watching over us or something that's more of a um, sort of a oversight kind of thing. But will they make themselves fully known? Will there be a moment in time where we look up and we see them everywhere? And will it appear in the next 10 years? Let's find out, Dawn. Okay. So will they make themselves known and appear above major cities of the world? Just as was envisaged, envisaged by this podcaster that Dawn listens to within the next 10 years.
So we have the Five of Pentacles in reverse, the Page of Swords in reverse, and the Queen of Cups. So what I have here is a really interesting response. We've got the Five of Pentacles in reverse. And the Five of Pentacles is, um, I don't often describe it as a turning point card, but it is, and it kind of makes sense, because when you hear the rest of it, you understand that, of course, it is. The Five of Pentacles is about um, destitution and loss, regardless of whether it's upright or in reverse. But when it's in reverse, the question of destitution and loss is one which is a turning point issue, because there could be an offer of assistance here, and that assistance could help or it could make things worse. And there is always the risk that you could lose everything as part of that turning point. Okay, so that's sort of a, a more uh, a filled in, more of a filled in definition for what you normally hear. And um, so it just goes to show that, you know, it always has been a turning point. I just haven't explicitly stated that very often. Um, but now you can understand the connection between the rest of the definitions. Here we've got the anchor card, which sits in the center. And this is about malicious um, slander, malicious gossip. It's a messenger card and it's a rapid message um, because of the fact that when it's upright, um, this is a quick kind of fellow. And the message is one that's relatively um, um, clear and concise and, and quick. Um, there's also personality disorder here and difficult childhood appears. And then we've got the Queen of Cups, which is an emotionally supportive, friendly energy, someone who's kind and a good friend. I think what the cards are collectively saying is that um, there's a transition here. I think the answer is yes. OK, because if the answer was not yes, it would appear with a different set of cards that would take us off into um, something that doesn't appear to have an ending and this appears to have an ending i think that what the cards are saying is the pinnacle moment here is with the anchor card and that is um the decline of us as humans on earth into one that is disordered in nature with the divide and the fighting and the bickering um and the it's not the childishness. The difficult childhood is about the fact that, um, you know, you, you often hear that America, for, this is not about just America, but you often hear that America, for example, is built on conflict and violence. So the it's always had a violent past. And the difficult childhood can translate to that violent past. And the violent past is something that continues to present itself and we don't learn the lesson and instead we become more disordered and become more vicious and we don't learn the lesson and we see the hardships of that that appear here. But we still don't learn the lesson. And so we're re arriving at a point where the message is going to be delivered. I believe that this is the entity that um, Dawn is asking about, which is a benevolent and kind, supportive energy that's monitoring us. There's a moment where we're going to take it too far and the intervention and the arrival will appear and it's there to support us. But it's whether or not the support is successful that, you know, because of this card, I have to maintain my understanding of the full definitions and there's a turning point that appears here. So it's not a given that this, um, this, rev this big reveal is going to be one that is successful. We, we could end up in a better position. We could up in a, end up in a worse position. Perhaps it has a lot to do with us and our free will. But the presence itself is a kind, uh, supportive, emotionally supportive and um, gentle, friendly presence. And I think that what the cards are saying that, yes, in the next 10 years, it is very likely that there is going to be a reveal because we've we've failed to learn from our mistakes and continue to spiral into this sort of rotational um, position of, um, of ne negativity and disorder. And so there will be um, an intervention that, well, uh, no, 
the question was not about intervention and it's not about invasion. It's about there being the reveal that actually an appearance on mass that is unmistakable. And I think, yes, the answer is yes. And um, the entities that will be revealed are, are on our side, so long as we allow them to be. Thanks for the question. So Kenny has asked, um, could you consider doing a reading to see if you see any of the Fox personalities might get called to the January 6 hearings, including maybe uh, Murdoch, or I'm assuming Rupert Murdoch, that would be interesting if Hannity, Tucker, Laura Ingram, and that screaming banshee judge, etc. And I think um, Judge Janine might be the one that Kenny uh, that Kenny's talking about. Thank you. I'll be watching your YouTube channel. Thank you, Kenny. Um, let's put down a few cards for each of those people. So we've got Rupert Murdoch, Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, Laura Ingram, and Judge Janine. What is her name? Janine Pirro. Okay. Uh, Janine Pirro seems to be sort of fading into the background of Fox. Let's do her first. Let's kind of do it in order, ascending order of um, unsavoriness. <laughs> Why not? So, well, she's pretty unsavory, but she's kind of a bit second tier, isn't she? She's not, she's not a big deal over there anymore. I don't know what's going on, but... The three that seem to be the biggest deals are um, in order of appearance. Tucker, Hannity, Laura. And then Janine is somewhere around the second tier. Yeah. So let's start with her. Anyway. So Janine Pirro. Is she likely to get called by the committee? Now remember, the committee has not finished its work just because these hearings are taking place in June. This is sort of the halfway point. It's going to be continuing on. And I have suspected that all of these um, media people are lined up for the next phase when um, they've been given enough rope to sort of really hang themselves. And then I think they will appear. But let's just see what the cards have to say. So Justice in Reverse, the Seven of Swords in Reverse, and then the Three of Swords in Reverse. I don't think so. So I don't think Janine Pirro, no. We've got this um, Poetic Justice that appears here with the Justice card, and this is a like a true justice. This is a, a regret or remorse after having stolen something, or stolen something or done something that you think you're entitled to, may or may not be the case, but you think you're entitled to it. And then we've got here um, uh, making a quick recovery or hiding the true extent of the pain. I think that the recovery element is what's relevant. And um, I think that um, it could even be hiding the true extent of the pain. But I think that what this is about is that um, there's something else coming for her. The karmic justice is one that um, you kind of, you reap what you sow. And so there's something else in store for her, which will provide her with regret. But the quick recovery, I think, relates to the hearings. And so I think that the answer is no when it comes to Janine. So let's take a look at Rupert Murdoch. I don't think he will be called either, especially because he's largely considered... Um, or being described as being very hands-off when it comes to Fox. Um, he really just uh, spends the money now, doesn't he? He doesn't really make the decisions anymore. He is about 100 and something years old, or thereabouts. Let's have a look. So we've got the Four of Pentacles in reverse. The Six of Pentacles in reverse and the Knight of Cups in reverse. Okay, stingy, um, not wanting to leave your comfort zone, really um, hoarding card. So this is a really tight hoarding card. Okay, uh, fraud, jealousy, grey, actually, do you know what? Maybe. If not him, then maybe his son. Fraud, jealousy, greed, corruption. Okay. And then the Knight of Cups is the deceitful lover. This is the one who tells you a whole bunch of lies and then leaves you stranded in the street. 
this is almost, you know, when I was doing the Julian Assange reading uh, just the other day, this came up and it can be um, described as almost like an espionage card because this is where you claim to be true, but you're actually really unfaithful. And it can be applied to a love affair. It can be applied to your patriotism. It can be applied to, you know, um, um, the the your true sentiment to the people that you're delivering a message to. You know how Donald says he loves stupid people. Okay. He doesn't. He actually, he really hates them and he doesn't want to be anywhere near them and he thinks they are the unwashed. He doesn't want to actually be in the same vicinity. He has to be elevated on a podium at least 50 feet away from any of them. But he will tell them over and over again that he loves them because that's how he gets what he wants from them. That's what this card is all about. It could also be about someone who works for um, the CIA or some other intelligence, a national intelligence um, um, agency. But actually, at the end of the day, they go home and they call in to the Kremlin and give them all the secrets that they've heard that day. It's the same kind of unfaithful lover card. What this demonstrates to me is we have a really tight hold on at the moment. But the card in the center is the one that I think is key. And this is the one about um, the, the dishonesty that appears, the fraudulent, the, the fraudulence that appears. And I think there is a possibility that whoever it is that is key in the Murdoch empire is not going to be immune from what the January 6th um, committee is doing. I'm not sure that it's going to be that they're going to be called for these hearings in June, but the committee's work would not have finished. And I think they are going to sweep up some of these people. And there is a Murdoch here that appears. I don't know if it's going to be Rupert Murdoch. It could be Lachlan Murdoch. But I asked about Rupert, so it would be someone delegated, if not him, then someone delegated to speak on his behalf. That's interesting. So let's have a look now at Laura Ingram. <clears throat> the next three are key because these are the ones who actually are powerful entities in their own right and seem to be able to run the show. They've almost out, out, outpowered the, or overpowered the Murdochs themselves when it comes to what's what's happening at Fox News. Laura being the least influential of them all, of the three. One of my favourite things about Laura Ingram is when she was recently talking about how tough her mother had it. Um, I think she was a talking about um, her mum being a single mum or something. I'm not sure. All I know is that she was she spent a lot of time on her show not that long ago talking about how her mum had it really tough but managed to make it through and what did, wasn't making very money and lived a really poor life. And, and then when they were doing the fact checking, it turns out that actually Laura Ingram was making a fortune during the time that she claims that her mother was really doing it rough. And so what that translated to is that she did nothing to help her own mum. That's all she was really admitting to, was that she was flying high in her career and doing nothing to support her mother, who she said was struggling to survive at the same time. And um, yeah, that's very caring of her. Anyway, so Laura Ingram, will she be called by the committee to provide evidence? The Empress, the Knight of Wands, and the High Priestess. There is a possibility. Empress, this is about um, fertility and abundance and motherhood. The fertility, I think, relates to information. The Knight of Wands is about a enthusiastic card, lustful, but it lacks focus and can be scattered. So, you know, there's going to be some confusion around it, a bit of misinformation thrown around. They may have to subpoena her. She may try to shrug off the subpoena and say, you know, I once met Donald Trump, which means I'm immune to subpoenas and things that, you know, some of the crazy arguments that they make. Here we've got the um, intuition and secrets and going within. I think the going within goes into into testimony. The, um, the secrets are about um, having information to tell, which also appears here. And I think, yes, there's a possibility that she may be called in the future. 
let's have a look then at um, Sean Hannity. Remember that dream I had of Sean Hannity, of him drowning? We do have text messages of his, so he's already implicated. Let's just see what the cards have to say about Sean Hannity. Will he be called by the committee? So we've got the Ten of Cups, the Ten of Wands in reverse, and the Emperor. Yep. And I think um, that there's a possibility that he may be subpoenaed as well. And I think that's what this card is. So we've got here um, um, happy families, joy, peace, love. Okay. And then we've got this um, letting go of a dream and facing a tough reality. So this is the whole riding high, doing really well at Fox News. He's got his supporters that idolize him. He's riding high on a wave. Everything's groovy except then it's not and um, there's a tough reality to be faced and that is that there's organization and control in the future and i think that this is a subpoena process for sean hannity so yes i think that's a very firm yes and then um mr misinformation himself tucker carlson some of you have been asking, why is it that I watch Dr. Carlson so that you don't have to? I'm only watching him to report on what he's talking about instead of the January 6th hearings. So at the time that um, a new hearing has taken place and his show appears immediately after it, I'm looking to see what he's saying that he thinks is going to retain his audience and prevent them from watching the hearings. Because, you know, he's really desperately trying to stop them from watching the hearings. Um... And that's all. Just so that you know. Some people seem to like it. Other people prefer that I wouldn't. But we've only got a few more hearings left. So I think I'll just carry on. Also, I'm curious to know what he is trying to talk about that he thinks is going to be more interesting than the truth. <laughs> so Fox's um, ratings have not increased at all since the hearings started. But all of the other channels are experiencing a tremendous increase in ratings. And so what that indicates is that Fox is largely retaining their diehard supporter base. But everyone else is flocking to the hearings, which is a really good sign. Really good sign. Tucker's show is mind-numbingly boring. I can't watch it. I just I flick through it and find out what it is he's talking about. That's it. I can't sit and watch the whole thing. It's like watching paint dry for a living. <laughs> it's just, oh, couldn't do it. All right. So 10 of wands in reverse. Oh dear. Nine of cups in reverse. And the six of cups. I think there's a possibility here. His cards are different to Hannity's. Sean Hannity looks like there's a subpoena coming his way. When it comes to Tucker Carlson, it's a bit different. We still have that facing a tough reality element um, that I think means that he eventually is going to have to go in. We've got a fleeting satisfaction that appears here with the nine of cups in reverse. What it could be is that he's invited to come in, he makes a big deal out of it and says he's not going to bother because he once met Donald Trump and that makes him immune from subpoenas, you know, the same kind of nonsensical kind of excuse. He has, he has um, executive privilege because he once did an interview with Donald or something. Yep. And, um, but the memories of the past and the nostalgia would indicate that there's testimony. And I don't think it's forced. So I think that what may happen is as the situation gets warmer for him or hotter in the kitchen, I think he will um, initially try to ride on claims of, you know, it's a sham and, and um, 
I'm being victimized and I have executive privilege or whatever it is he tries to do. But eventually there's a tough reality that spilling the beans of the past is the way to go. So I do believe that there is actually going to be testimony and I don't think it'll be subpoenaed. I think that it might be quite, he might quite, after making a lot of fuss like Rudy Giuliani did and going on all the stations to say, all the right wing stations, to say, oh, it's a sham and everything. He quietly tiptoed in after and gave his testimony without any fanfare. It might be the same kind of thing. So there you go. The bigger the mouth, the quieter the testimony. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I love knowing you're here and I'll see you in my dreams. Bye. Can you imagine if a state as large as, say, the state of California decided to enact laws that made it unlawful for any state officials to accept money from gun lobby groups? I wonder what kinds of decisions those politicians would make. I wonder what kind of alliances those public officials would form. Find my petition at change.org forward slash guns kill children and sign. Don't think about whether or not it can be done today or tomorrow. Don't look at it from a logical perspective. Don't stall. Don't debate. Don't analyze. Just sign.